Hey everyone, it's Rob at Mr. Robot Shop. I uh, know it's been a long time since I did a video, so I thought I'd uh, share a couple cool things I got with you. On eBay, I found these outgoing uh, answering machine message tapes. Uh, they used to sell them at Radio Shack. I think they were like maybe five to ten dollars each back in the day. But essentially, you would uh, play the tape on your tape player, and then the sound from that would you'd hit the record button on your answer machine and a lot of times a lot of people would be kinda uh, nervous about recording their own voices so you could essentially have pre-recorded messages uh, off these tapes so I'm gonna do each one this is Julie D's comedy edition so I don't know who Julie D's is <coughs> excuse me I'm guessing this is a person that actually made the tapes uh, the other tapes I have there's a comedy edition um, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll just go through each tape and do a separate video on each tape, but here's the other four I got. So I'm going to have a, f a total of five uh, videos when I'm done. So anyways, this cassette player that I'm playing it on is a General Electric. I had this, I think my parents bought this for me when I was in the, I don't know, when I was probably less than 10 years old back in the 1970s. So um, there's a little bit of noise that comes off of it, but it still does work. So anyways, I'm going to start the tape and then I'll stop the video when the tape's all done. And then um, I'll go ahead and go into the next tape. Okay, so here's again Julie D's comedy edition. I'm just going to put the camera right here so you can see what's going to be playing. You can read that. Trying to get this thing to focus. Thanks for buying Radio Shack's outgoing messages. We're sure you'll enjoy using them as much as we enjoy doing them for you. The voices on this tape have been specially prepared to get you more messages. And now here's how to use them to your best advantage. First, using any standard cassette player, listen to the Radio Shack outgoing messages and then choose one. Notice that three seconds before each voice, there is a cueing chime. The chime indicates that you have three seconds before Radio Shack's outgoing message starts. Then, in a quiet place, record Radio Shack's outgoing message from the cassette player's speaker into the microphone of the answering machine. You can personalize your message in several ways, either by inserting your voice before or after the Radio Shack outgoing messages. This way, people will know that they have reached you and not a wrong number. You can experiment with the distance between the cassette player's speaker and the answering machine's microphone for best results. A distance of three to four inches with a medium volume is recommended. Remember, Radio Shack's outgoing messages will work with all types of answering machines, single cassette or loop, regardless of the make or age of the machine. And your Radio Shack store offers a complete line of accessories for your telephone and your answering machine, including various lengths of endless loops and incoming cassettes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Radio Shack's outgoing messages. I want to be called by you, just you, and nobody else would do. Oh, it was really elegant of you to call. This machine will take your message. Do you want to be beeped by me alone? But you, 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 So nice of you to call. I'm five foot three, five foot two in my stocking feet. I like a great deal of fresh air, horseback riding English style. I like a moderate amount of alcohol, good parties, and I'm accustomed to having an answering machine take all my calls. Now that you know all about me, tell me all about you. Hello. The house you have called couldn't be more glorious. The playroom off the swimming pool has its own jacuzzi, sauna, microwave oven, food dehydrator, and this widow ant's wig machine. The lady of the house jogs, plays tennis, and has no trouble getting a partner on her own racquetball court. So weave your name and number, and maybe you'll get invited over for a glass of Wawa. <laughs> Who is this on the telephone? C 
sorry, but no one is at home. Gosh, oh gee, but I have fun taking down messages one by one. I'm an orphan, but rich people are going to adopt me. They always do. So if you're rich, leave a message and the studio will call you back. <laughs> it don't matter that I'm not here, because I got this here recording device to take my calls. Here you call again, sounding better than a body has a right to, and leave a message so I will really know that you have called again, and here I go. Hello. This is Elizabeth Taylor, Hilton Wilding, Todd, Fisher, Burton, Burton, Warner, Taylor. And we're not here right now. So if you have a message for Nikki, Michael, Michael, Eddie, Richard, Richard, John, or me, just leave a message at the free. My goodness, another telephone call. But goodness had nothing to do with it. Mm, but when I am good, I'm very good. And when I'm bad, I'm better. And when I beep, I'm outrageous. Ooh. Hello, this is yours truly reporting from Hollywood. Don't look at this side of my face, thank you. It's so nice of you to call my dear, 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 dear friend whom I've never met. I've just run out of gossip, so I want smut, dirt, filth, names, and numbers, starting with yours at the beep. Are you a good call or a bad call? Or are you calling at all? Come out, come out, whoever you are. And leave a brief message, whoever you are. And Toro too, and Toto too. Yes, hello. If you are calling to ask whether your friend is here or not, the answer is no. If you are calling just to hang up the phone without leaving a message as a form of objection, it is an extremely unoriginal one and hardly worth making. Kindly leave your message at the tone. Okay, that's it. Uh, I said, I think I said Julie. Ah, uh, it's Julie D's. I did Google search this lady. Looks like it's Julie McWerther. Werther? Werther? I don't know. Anyways, uh, born in 1947, also known as Julie D's. Uh, she's a retired American voice actress and impressionist. Uh, known for her work as Jeannie in the animated version of Jeannie. I don't know if that's the uh, witch show back from the whenever, I don't know, what, 50s, 60s, whatever. Here's some bio on her. Looks like she's still alive and lives in, or was born in Indianapolis, Indiana, which is actually the city I grew up in. Years active, 1993, 1970, 1993, so. Animated version of Genie. So that wouldn't be the TV show. I don't know what that is. Let's click on that. Now you got me wondering here. Uh, <coughs> Bubbles and Jabberjaw and Baby Smurf and Sasset in the Smurf. So, okay. I remember Baby Smurf. Okay, so Genie was... They must have made a cartoon based on the, the I Dream of Genie or I Love Genie, whatever that show was uh, back in the day. So, Oh, Mark Hamill was in there too. That's interesting. I might have to pull that cartoon up and check it out. Because that would have been, let's see, 1973. So Mark Hamill must have done some stuff before uh, he was uh, 
Luke in uh, Star Wars, so I'm gonna go check that out. He's obviously one of the voices on the cartoon. I know I'm getting off topic here, but anyways, that's uh, where these voices came from, okay? And I hope you enjoyed. Uh, you guys have a good one. I'll post the other tapes in here in a little bit. Take care.